Hello everyone, we've made it to the weekend. I'm Courtney Courtright. Thank you so much for joining us for nine on the positive side. A concert series in Greenville has been a tradition since 1973. It's now up and running with entertainment for everyone. Let's check it out each Sunday from now until August. There will be different bands performing from 630 to 830 at night. There will also be food vendors. The Sunday in the Park Recreation Supervisor and Coordinator says thousands have been out here. And it's an event that satisfies all music lovers. I'd like to say uh, yeah, it's a great atmosphere out here at Sunday in the Park. We've got uh, food vendors. We have uh, uh, sparky snowballs. Just bring a lawn chair, a blanket, and come out here and enjoy a good time with your family. For more information on the Sunday in the Park series, visit our website, WNCT. Dot com. Now out in Winston-Salem this time of year, the scent from one man's rose garden will make everyone stop to smell the roses, including Chad Tucker, who has more on this special story. These roses have been here, most of them have been here, uh, 60 years. And Gary Fleming should know. Coming out of He's been tending these very bushes. Oh, yes for nearly half a century. So if these weren't here when you bought the home, do you think you would have gotten any roses? Probably not. What the previous owners planted, he's nurtured. When you cut it down to that five leaf cluster. Oh, yeah. This time of year, late spring, early summer, is when they put on a show. But it's a long stem, which are ideal for cutting and taking in for display. And where you'll find Gary almost every day. Right now it produces color for the neighborhood. If you catch the buds at the right stage. They're beautiful and they make wonderful bouquets that you bring in the house or you take to your friends or your family. Uh, just working in the roses is good therapy. Mostly white and pink. Most of Gary's garden therapy includes removing the spent blooms. What I'm doing now is basically deadheading. Making way for more color to share. But I will take these inside and uh, Claudia will arrange them in a vase because sharing their beauty is what it's all about. And that'll become a big bud. From family to the passing neighbor. You think he was like that? Colin, look at that. Well, it's, it's therapeutic. You come out here and you take care of something that you know is going to, to make a difference in the growth of the rose. And in the blooms of life. I missed that one. That we all, like Gary Fleming, can share. I'm not different. I'm not unique. Everybody likes to be appreciated for what they do. Their labor of love, whatever it is. Adios. In Winston-Salem. I like that. North Carolina. Everybody should like that. <laughs> Bye. I'm Chad Tucker. Oh, it's a good feeling, yeah. I love it. Maybe Gary could teach me a few things about gardening. Now, Gary says roses don't like it too hot or too cold. So once the heat kicks in, they'll stop blooming, but will open back up in the fall. One North Carolina photographer is giving everyone a up close look to the place that inspired America's favorite TV town of Mayberry. Let's check it out. Meet Robbie Curley. His love of photography has him capturing all the angles and the seasons of the town that inspired TV's Mayberry. That love has also captured so many people's attention, but what draws them to his art is his big heart. He gives it all away. It can be a challenge sometimes. It, it's a two-way street. I mean, the, the opportunity to do that for me is, a, is, is them giving back to me. You can find his images on social media and used by local tourism and downtown groups in Mount Airy, all gifted to help promote this place he loves so much. One Fort Bragg soldier returned home to surprise his son just moments before his high school graduation. Justin Moore has more from Cumberland County on the emotional reunion. Grays Creek High School seniors make final preparations before lining up for the graduation ceremony, a moment students like Alex Anderson worked so hard for. Alex Anderson, I need to see you just for a quick second. What he doesn't know is his hero and one of his biggest inspiration is waiting to surprise him. Anderson and his dad reunited for the first time since January. U.S. Army Sergeant First Class William Domnanski is a Fort Bragg paratrooper. He's on his ninth deployment serving in Poland. I, 
I wouldn't have missed this for the world. It's definitely different. My dad's not really an emotional guy, so to see him, you know, tearing up a little, it's really good to see. It makes me really happy. Love you, Dad. <laughs> the deplored father has been keeping this a secret for weeks with the help of his wife. He was like, well, I really wish Dad could be here. Um, I understand why he can't be here, and it took everything within me to contain myself and, and not, like, tell him what was going on. I had absolutely no clue. I thought he was going to be stuck over there, you know, with everything going on. I, I wasn't looking for anything, you know. I was just happy to graduate, move on to the next stage of life, my life, and have everyone here to support me. But to have him here is definitely the best gift. I'm super proud of my son, and that's what I'm here for. So. And Sergeant Domnaski will head back to Poland for duty, but the family, of course, is enjoying that big moment for now. If you have a sweet tooth, this story is for you. One North Carolina woman has a lot of customers lining up for her creations. They're made right here in North Carolina. Sharon Chavis launched her business Sweet Lovable Chocolates in Durham over six years ago. She has all kinds of delicious ideas, as you can see. One thing has turned into her signature treat, though. Well, they just come back for the strawberries because it's hard to get a real good chocolate covered strawberry that's fresh, you know, and just being dipped. So that makes people come back. Yum. She says she wants to keep her customers happy because sweet, lovable chocolate is not just the name of her business. It's something she wants to share with everyone so she can see those smiles. And for all of you ice cream lovers, this is a story for you. A more than 100 year old ice cream shop in Gastonia is still drawing in crowds of all ages. Tony's ice cream parlor on Franklin Boulevard has been serving up favorites since 19. 15, 28 flavors to be exact. Owners say they try to do the best they can for their neighbors. It's a motto lasting for generations for the Coletta family. My granddad, he, he spent his days going through the, the neighborhoods in the mill section, especially up in Firestone. People would come out with bowls and it didn't matter if they had money or not, they still won't get their ice cream. In the years the place has been open, the recipe has not changed once. Their secret, enhancing the flavor of their ice cream. And speaking of sweet treats, over in Indiana, a donut shop there proclaims themselves as the donut capital of the world. The record books state that might actually be true. Tom's Donuts in Ignolia sold 8,558 donuts this weekend to set a Guinness World Record. The donut shop had eight hours to meet their goal by selling freshly made donuts. Crowds pouring in to help make that possible. It's been here as long as I've been here, so it's just always been the first choice. I know I've been here longer than I've ever been born. And nothing's happier in this world than a donut, right? The owner of Tom's says the secret to their success is their homemade donut recipe. Now back here in North Carolina, for all of you donut lovers still, Krispy Kreme is giving you a free donut through Labor Day. Whenever a store turns on its hot light, when that light goes off, signaling donuts are rolling fresh off the glazer. You'll get one free, no purchase required. Not all stores have hot lights, but some do on for hours, twice a day. So have your eagle eyes paying attention in the store, or you can download the Krispy Kreme app for hot light alerts. Hello, thank you for calling the Kindergarten Courage Hotline. Coming up, how a group of kindergartners are helping people find a little extra courage these days. Plus, the story of a veteran who is still finding ways to serve. Contagious, a group of kindergartners are spreading courage to anyone who needs to hear it and wants to dial in. Alex Stokes brings us all of a boost of courage from Ohio. Why does this take courage right now? Because you're on TV. You better believe these kindergartners at Gurney Elementary School in Chagrin Falls have a whole lot of courage. The first day of school, yeah. to talk, to talk. To learn my teacher. Losing a tooth? How did you show courage with losing a tooth? Pulling it out. And with the help of their teachers, they're lending a boost of courage to others over the phone. Hello, thank you for calling the Kindergarten Courage Hotline. 
everybody needs some courage once in a while. We decided to put together a Kinder Courage hotline that our community and maybe further reaching than that could call in and get a little dose of what we've been learning about. <laughs> This year, Chagrin Falls Schools chose a district-wide theme of courage. Courage seemed pretty fitting for this year, coming off of um, virtual school and hybrid school and coming all back together. Awesome Kinds. Paired with a book of the same name. And Everyday Kinds. They would relate to this page a lot. You can do it always and every day. The school year opened with the courage to make new friends. And there are lots of different kinds of it. And the kids will close out the school year with something else that takes courage. Helping other people to say goodbye. We sat down as a, as a kindergarten team and we thought, okay, we definitely need things that would apply to anyone who would listen to it. When you call in, you get four options. If you need to hear to have the courage to say goodbye, please press one. So pick up the phone if you need it. Hear from 80 kindergartners and know that your courage will never let you down. I think kids have a wonderful way of cutting to the chase. I think that they don't say a lot of fluff and they tell it like it is. In Chagrin Falls. Try something new. Alex Stokes. You can do something big. Fox 8 News. So get out there and take a chance. And here are some other options on that hotline. Courage to try new things, take a risk, and shine your light. If you're in need of a little extra courage, just call the hotline number listed here at the bottom of your screen. And graduation day is special for many reasons. For this High Point 8th grader, Journey Dumas, it's a day the family says they thought would never happen. Journey was in need of a heart transplant. She was anxiously waiting for an organ she couldn't live without and lived with an artificial heart for two months. Now ahead of graduation, she finally got this good news. She's getting a new heart. Dumas says it's the little things she'll be looking forward to again, like sleeping in her own bed and taking regular showers without being connected to anything. We heard that he is loved delivering, loves UPS, and he loves bringing joy to for what we do to other people. A special surprise for this seven-year-old still to come, how these two are delivering joy. Welcome back to this special story. A World War II veteran hit a big milestone, turning 100 years old. And to this day, he's still serving, giving back. Mary Nelson introduces us to Frank Smith. Like our homes. Set them out on the table and then we'll sauce them and cheese them. The heart of the Beatrice Senior Center is the kitchen. Today is Parmesan chicken with noodles. Meals are made and delivered with love. There's Frank. Hi, Frankie. Frank Smith volunteers every weekday. Oh, anywhere from 15 to 20 deliveries every day. He's done it for five years. He studies his list and waits until it's time. Then Frank loads his cart and car, and with Angela's help, I'm in the back. I'm the back end pilot. He sets out to feed more than bellies. Just go do our thing. That's up to them to catch up. I'll just give you a hug. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'll give you a hug. Yeah. You're on TV. What? Yeah, you're famous. You're full of it. No, there they are. There they are. I'll give you a hug. And you know, a hug is good medicine. It makes people know that somebody cares. And that's what I do. Frank has learned how laughter is good medicine, too. I have more girlfriends than anybody. Oh, I believe that. You're such a handsome I, guy. I, I'm up to 32 of them, I think. <laughs> Some people miss out on the smiles and squeezes. She's not home. She's still at rehab. Hairdresser day. Oh, it's her hair day? Okay. And she's not back yet. Okay. Frank knows and cares about everyone. He sees it as his duty, just as he cared for inmates as a prison chaplain, farmed for years before, and served in World War II. I was a volunteer. 
I was an ROTC and I was 23 months in service. He enlisted in the Army when he was 18. Today, at 100 years old, some experiences from the war still cause nightmares. But knowing the bad... He's a good guy. He's a good guy. ...helps Frank see and be much. the good. I love seeing your picture in the paper, though. This is uh, our basic freedom that we enjoy so much. And that's why I'm doing this. That's why I'm a patriot. And one last sweet story for you. Sacramento, California, seven-year-old Drew Bosman has Down syndrome. He's a huge fan of UPS and wants to be a UPS driver. According to his mom, Becky, his superpower is bringing joy to others. He wants to be a driver so he can deliver the kind of joy he sees our drivers giving each day. Molly Real shows us how Drew is delivering joy to his school thanks to UPS. Oh, there right you go. <laughs> Seven-year-old Drew Bosman loves UPS. And every time a UPS truck would go by, UPS! His favorite color, brown. His Halloween costume, you guessed it. We got him a little uniform for Halloween and it stuck. He started wanting to put it on and deliver packages to his friends and he told everyone who would listen that he wants to be a UPS truck driver when he grows up. And his mom it Becky heavy, says huh? it's because Drew says UPS delivers joy, which is fitting. Joy is kind of my platform as it relates to Down syndrome because to be honest, having a kid with Down syndrome has been the greatest source of joy in my life. And today, UPS delivered something special to Drew, his biggest dream, to suit up in brown and bring parcels filled with presents to his peers. We heard that he is loves delivering, loves UPS, and he loves bringing joy to for what we do to other people. Uh, yeah. In a miniature truck decorated with flames and filled with packages, UPS driver Ian Geddes drove Drew to his school, Caleb Greenwood. Together, they announced their arrival, <laughs> unloaded the parcels, and wheeled them onto campus for Drew's first grade class. Living his dream, delivering joy. This little kid who would do anything that anybody asked freely, and we get a call from this lovely corporation willing to do something like this for us, and it's just everything. Drew's mom says joy is the delivery he makes every day. That's what Drew's here to do. He does it to everybody he meets, and it just moves you to tears. And that was Molly Real reporting for us. Spread joy. Perfect. Thanks for watching. Nine on the positive side. But one last thing to show you. We have a celebration. This panda's first birthday. Have a great rest of your weekend, everyone. We'll see you next time.